Hi, today in this lecture we will see how to conduct the exploratory data analysis in R. For this we will take a simple case study in R and see how, it, how we can go about it. So for that the case study comprises a data set with the name algae. To invoke that we need the library of uh, called DMWR. So we will kindly load it. So library of DMWR and see how the data set looks like. So this is data of algae and right head of algae. Here there are three dummy variables season, size and speed. These are three categorical variables. Besides that there are eight other quantitative variables and there are dependent variables A1, A2 and so on up till A7. So basically this is a data set which tries to predict the occurrence of algae in a certain water sample. These are the explanatory variables, 3 categorical plus 8 quantitative, so total 11 variables explanatory. And we will focus on one dependent variable that is A1. So A1 is a certain kind of algae for which we want to predict. So first we start the data analysis by writing summary of algae to see how the distributions have their statistical measures. So Take any example, say MXPH, this variable has a minimum value of 5.6, the first quantile is 7.7 .7 and so on and has a maximum value of 9.7. Similarly, if you see the categorical variable speed, so in the total data set, that the data set size is 200. So out of those 200 entries, speed is high in 84 cases, it is low in 33 and it is medium in 83 values. So we know that high and medium are more frequently occurring in the data set than the value low. Similarly, we can have a look of the minimum, maximum, mean, median values for all these variables. Now these variables give us a crude uh, a statistical measure of how the distribution is like. We would like to have some graphical measures in order to see how this distributions for the uh, variables are. So say I want to plot a histogram for a certain variable, say let us take MXPH that is a variable explanatory variable so I write algae dollar mxph that is how I would address this variable and probabilities is equal to true that will plot it against the, those probabilities so we see this is the graph for it the histogram of mx the variable mxph the uh, y-axis has the densities that is the probabilities because we had mentioned probability is equal to true had we not written that here the y-axis would have the frequency values and not the probability values the x values are the mxph values so from this we can have a look that it is a fairly normal distribution. You see the most of the values are concentrated around the mean value. So we have a rough idea that the variable mxph is nearly normal. So let us reconfirm this by doing it another way, uh, taking a more graphical and a more mechanized way by plotting the QQ plots. QQ plots are quantile quantile plots. In order to invoke that we should have the library called car so i'll just load that so library of car and qq plots will be seen shortly so let me set the function qq dot plot of algae dollar mx ph comma main is equal to normal qq plot so main is the uh, setting that will show us the heading for the graph. So we have the QQ plot. Let us have a look of how it is. So this is how the normal QQ plot looks like. So what the QQ plot does is to plot the variable values. These are my variable values algae dollar mxph against the theoretical quantile values of a normal distribution. So these are normal quantiles. Also these red dashed lines are the 95% confidence interval for this normal distribution. So now if you see these, these black circles are the values and they fairly lie on the red line. So for a lot of the values they are on the red line. That shows that it is a fairly normal distribution. There are only some values which fall offside this, this area and the other area. And these red dashed lines are the 95% confidence intervals. So the fact that this variable mxph follows a normal distribution was first seen with the help of a histogram and now with the help of a qq plot. Again there is another better way 
in order to see the uh, the distribution of a variable by something called a box plot so we plot the box plot of say algae dollar let us do it this time for another variable called opo4 so this time we did it for the variable mxph let us do it for opo4 this time so it's opo4 comma ylab is equal to opo4 and we get the box plot so this is known as a box plot we will shortly see what the interpretations are for this before that i will add another line to it the ab line where h is equal to mean of algae dollar opo4 comma na dot rm is equal to true comma line type is say 2 let us see how it is so if you see carefully this additional black dashed line has been added to the graph after I give the second command. Now what is it? The box plot is a plot, is a plot where the vertical lines are the first and the third quantiles of the variable. So this is my variable OPO4 and the vertical lines are showing the first and the third quantiles. Now this box has a bold horizontal line. This shows the median value of the variable. So OPO4 has this particular median value denoted by this horizontal line. There are also small horizontal dashed line below the box that is representing the values just greater than or equal to the first quantile. So this is a, this line shows us the value which is greater than or equal to the first quantile. So this can be taken as a measure of the first quantile. There are some values which are lying outside this box. These are known as the outliers. Now outliers are such values which move really apart from the rest of the values in the distribution and they are uh, usually problematic for the data handling so we'll see what what we can do about it in the next video now ab line has plotted this additional horizontal line this dashed line and it does it at the mean value of the variable so this is my median this is my mean there are the first and the uh, third quantiles these are the out outlier values so from this, we can see that the distribution of this variable OPO4 has a distribution of the observed values clearly concentrated on low values. So these are basically low values. Most of the concentration is around the low values, say between 0 to 100. And there's a positive skew. So that is how the interpretation of such a graph can be done. Now, there is also another provision called condition plots. So condition plots are also some graphical measures that will depend on a certain factor. So in case I want to see how the distribution uh, is for certain categorical variables, I can do it with the help of condition plots. So let us see a small example where we can uh, observe this. So in our case where we had 11 variables, we had three of them as categorical and the remaining eight were uh, quantitative. So let us take any qualitative variable and see how to plot. So before that, we need something called a library of lattice library lattice that will plot the bw plot so the command for this is bw plot of size size is the name of that categorical variable regressed on a1 comma data is equal to algae comma y lab is equal to reverse size and x lab is equal to a1 so x lab and y lab will give the labels for the x and the y axis respectively and that is how it looks so we see there was a variable with us a categorical variable called river size that took three values small medium and large the dependent variable is a1 so we want to see how a1 varies with river size so we see that small the the values taken by small follows such a kind of a box plot with medium it is like this and for large it is like this so the most frequent thing what we can see the most simple thing what we observe is that there are more algae in small rivers so this is small and see the number of algae present in small rivers is much higher it is much higher than the ones in medium and large river size so we have a quick analysis that in medium sized rivers, the presence of algae is the least. However, in small river sizes, it is the most. If you see the span of the small river size has the highest number of algae A1. So that is how different kinds of plots can be made in order to have a 
simple exploratory data analysis for any variable for any data set. So the usually the very first step is to have a simple exploratory data analysis in order to understand how the variables are distributed, what kind of a distribution they follow, and in order to follow or find out any patterns available in those data sets. So that is how EDA is done. Thank you.